Hello guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Jesper Offersen and today we are going to talk about um, an antioxidant. We are going to talk about uh, the coenzyme Q10 or uh, you might know it as a ubiquinone or a ubiquinol. So uh, when you buy it, uh, when you buy ubiquinol as I do, uh, it comes uh, in a bottle like this and this one here is from now. Uh, but uh, there are a lot of companies that are doing uh, this stuff here. Um, I used to take a uh, ubiquinone uh, until I found out that uh, ubiquinol was uh, actually much more bioavailable for uh, the body and therefore I take that form instead. But what happens uh, in the body is that uh, when you have taken uh, ubiquinone, then it will be um, reduced to its uh, active form, the uh, ubiquinol. It just takes that little uh, step. And when that is used, it is converted back to, um, or the end product is a uh, ubiquinone after the ubiquinol has been used for its purpose as an antioxidant. So uh, what else are we going to talk about uh, in this uh, little video here? Uh, we are going to talk about an enzyme called uh, catalase. And um, we are talking about that because this uh, video here is actually about how you can help uh, your hair if it has started to become uh, gray. Uh, so I have noticed that uh, there is a lot of uh, interest in uh, some of those videos that uh, I have made uh, about um, going uh, gray and what you can do about it and what it actually means that you are going gray. Um, there is um, a lot of uh, questions to me that I'm trying to, to answer in the comments box. And uh, one of the things is uh, that uh, people are saying they go gray very early and if it's uh, genetic or if it's not genetic or whatever. I mean, there could be reasons that your diet is so poor in various nutrients and so on that your hair will go gray uh, early and fixing that it might uh, help uh, on your hair but the thing is that if you are going gray early and uh, you don't have any sort of uh, dietary reasons for uh, going gray uh, then it is a genetic um, it's a uh, decided by uh, your genetic makeup that you are going gray earlier than uh, another person of the same age kind of like would not be going gray at the same age so that is uh, the genetic uh, side of it but uh, is there something you can do about it and yes there is because the thing is that as we age and that is different from person to person i mean the years are clocking up yes but how is uh, your body actually uh, aging and uh, for some people some processes in the body they will uh, start to uh, slow down uh, earlier than for uh, other people or persons and um, the thing is that if you are compensating uh, for that sort of um, age related um, less good working um, things in your body like uh, your body is not uh, producing uh, the same amount of uh, catalase perhaps or uh, your body is not as good as uh, to uh, to use a uh, coenzyme q10 uh, then uh, you will have some issues and there you can go in and help your body by uh, using a product like uh, the uh, ubiquinol here so uh, what is it that uh, goes on when uh, catalase is uh, not working as it should the thing uh, with catalase is that uh, we might produce less of it as we age, but also what happens as we age uh, is that we are producing much more uh, hydrogen peroxide in our body. And though catalase is something that um, is supposed to deal with hydrogen peroxide, it is also vulnerable to hydrogen peroxide. So actually hydrogen peroxide can go in and deactivate uh, catalase. And I will make a, a video about uh, more in detail what is actually going on and what can be uh, done um, about that. Um, so far, uh, if we look at ubiquinol, then uh, there are studies, and I will link uh, to those studies uh, below, so you can uh, read them uh, yourself. And those studies, they, they, they explain how uh, ubiquinol can actually uh, raise the level of uh, catalase in your body, as well as uh, uh, other uh, enzymes and uh, products in the body that are helpful uh, when you want to uh, dismantle hydrogen uh, peroxide. Because uh, as we have spoken about in other videos, then uh, hydrogen peroxide that is something that will go in and uh, 
if you have too much of it, uh, there will always be some in your body and there should be some in your body. But if you have too much uncontrolled, uh, it can go in and it will uh, do so that uh, your hair will start to lose uh, its uh, color and that is because um, it is uh, working on some of those uh, enzymes that are actually producing the color in the first place and some of those um, enzymes that are actually supposed to dismantle hydrogen peroxide itself but if there is too much of it then as i said hydrogen peroxide can actually go in and deactivate what is supposed to help our body to get rid of hydrogen peroxide. So it's a little bit uh, complicated. So uh, some of those uh, articles that I'm linking to uh, below, they will uh, show you how uh, ubiquinol can actually be used uh, to um, help the body uh, get rid of hydrogen uh, peroxide. So uh, what uh, ubiquinol uh, actually uh, does is that it works as an antioxidant and in various ways it is helping the body getting rid of hydrogen peroxide. So if we get uh, as much help as we can to get uh, rid of hydrogen peroxide, then catalase can actually uh, work much better and do what it's actually supposed to do. Now, we have spoken um, about uh, something else, and that is uh, glutathione. So glutathione is uh, also something that um, not in itself is going in um, and dismantling hydrogen peroxide, but it is used um, so that other enzymes related to glutathione can work on hydrogen peroxide uh, to dismantle it. So what we um, do when we are younger uh, is that uh, our system with the uh, glutathione and catalase and ubiquinol, it all works uh, fine. But as uh, we age, then it does uh, end up not working that well. And there we can go in and we can compensate for um, that sort of uh, issue. And uh, one of the articles uh, below uh, mentioned that uh, they did a study and that was not in relation to uh, going gray or having gray hair. It was uh, in relation to uh, some uh, fertility issues like um, male fertility uh, issues. And in uh, that study, they used uh, 200 milligrams of uh, Q10. Uh, they don't really mention what it was, if it was like a uh, ubiquinone or it was a ubiquinol. But uh, the ubiquinol uh, is uh, the most uh, potent form, or that is actually the active form, and that's the form that is um, taken up uh, better um, in the body compared to ubiquinone. But both of them will uh, work sort of like uh, in the same way, but uh, it needs a little bit of an extra step for uh, ubiquinone to be used. So uh, this uh, one here is uh, extra strength, I think uh, it says uh, ubiquinol, and that is uh, 200 uh, milligrams, it uh, says uh, down here. So uh, that is uh, the one uh, I use. I used uh, another one before, I think it was from, uh I think it was from Holland and Barrett, some of their own, but uh, uh, much easier to or cheaper to buy it uh, online. Um, so uh, yeah, that's where I got uh, this one here from and now. So um, what uh, that study showed that uh, various um, things in the body was uh, regulated or upregulated. So there was more of it uh, in uh, the body and that uh, among those things they looked at was a uh, catalase and uh, superoxide dismutase, which also is something that is helping us uh, as an antioxidant. So uh, various things that you would like to have uh, at a nice good level, uh, that uh, ubiquinol uh, or Q10 can go in and help you uh, with. So uh, how much should you in general take? Well, in this study here, they saw a difference when uh, the um, participants were taking uh, 200 milligrams. And I have taken uh, 200 milligrams for a long time. And uh, I am a little bit uh, about to try out if uh, I should take uh, 400 milligrams. Uh, if I'm going to do that, I will not take it uh, in one go. I would split it so I take it uh, 200 milligrams in the morning and uh, 200 uh, in the evening. And then when I take it in the evening, I will take it with uh, a meal. Because uh, the thing is, um, and at the moment, if you have seen some of my other videos about how, how I uh, eat at the moment, uh, I don't uh, eat uh, breakfast at the moment uh, as a, some sort of a trial when I was um, looking into a glycine as something of a slimming down issue. And I will link to that video uh, up here. So the thing is that uh, with ubiquinol, that is something that um, 
you need to take it together with a, a fatty meal because uh, it is not water soluble. It needs to be soluble into um, to oil. So if you have a, a fatty meal or if you take it with maybe uh, your uh, fish liver oil or cut liver oil as it would normally be. Usually it's cut liver oil when you are having a fish liver oil. Uh, so you could take it with that. So you get some sort of uh, oil in your system. So this stuff will be much uh, easier taken up by uh, your body. Now, you might have heard about uh, there are uh, other um, Q10 forms or there are um, there is a, an artificial form and that is something called Mito-Q or Mito-Q um, that uh, has uh, some sort of um, alterations done to it and the purpose of that was to make it easier to be taken up by uh, the mitochondria, and uh, it does uh, it is it works in a way that it, it is taken up uh, easier by the mitochondria and uh, you can see a lot of praises about it uh, when you go online, uh, at least not, uh, not in the least, well, very much from the company that produces it. But uh, there is a, a little problem with it. And now again, I will link to that study uh, below so you can uh, see it for yourself. And the problem is that uh, when uh, this uh, artificial form of, or the enhanced form of um, ubiquinol uh, is um, taken in the form of a uh, meto Q, then uh, the uh, mitochondria, they will start to swell. And that uh, there is a study that shows uh, why uh, that is, or they have used some special techniques that are not normally used. So they could actually see that uh, the mitochondria, they were swelling. and. Uh, you don't want your mitochondria to swell. You might kind of like look at it in the same way as um, you would like your skin to be plump, but you don't like to be swollen. So kind of like it, that's the same sort of a issue. So uh, for that reason, I would not take a Mito-Q. And in general, I would be a little bit um, cautious about uh, things that are not the uh, the natural form, um, unless it is very um, looked into and um, really well uh, described what is going on by all sort of uh, sources and particularly uh, sources that does not rely on uh, getting any sort of money from uh, any sort of a certain uh, company that happens to produce what they are talking about. So uh, that was just a, a little bit uh, that uh, you should be a little bit careful with uh, what you are taking when you are looking at uh, supplements. So uh, yes, um, that was uh, what I had to say uh, about uh, ubiquinol. Uh, it should be something that uh, can help uh, your hair start to be uh, less gray. I mean, when I talk about um, doing something about uh, gray hair, it is not, and that is also what I'm explaining people, that uh, it should more be seen as you are delaying going gray. For some people, you can completely take away uh, the gray hairs, but uh, for most people, it would be some sort of like, um, you are delaying uh, the time that you are going gray, or if you have gone a little bit gray, then you can kind of like reduce some of the gray hairs. There might be some hairs that whatever you do, you just can't work on them, but the majority of uh, your gray hairs will start to be a more saturated, warmer uh, color again. So uh, this is uh, the principles of uh, how uh, catalase works. That uh, simply works in order to uh, help us um, get uh, rid of uh, hydrogen peroxide and uh, something like a uh, ubiquinol like this one here can help uh, catalase work better or it can uh, boost the amount of it that you have in your body. So uh, that could be something that uh, you could look into if you are looking into getting rid of gray hairs. But something else to say about gray hairs is that that is basically just an indicator of what is going on in your body. So uh, doing all these sort of things here will also have a positive effect on, on uh, the rest of your body. So um, yes. Uh, that was just uh, my words about uh, ubiquinol and uh, catalase for now. So uh, if you'd like to see more of this sort of videos, please subscribe, hit the bell, and do all the things you must do in order to be notified when I upload more of this sort of uh, videos. And particularly if you'd like to see the one where we are looking a bit more into uh, what issues there are with catalase and hydrogen uh, peroxide and what might be possible to do uh, about it. Thank you for watching. See you. Bye.